Hey everybody, tonight's book is going to be uh, The Dream Giver by Bruce Wilkinson, author of the New York Times number one bestseller, The Prayer of Jabez, with David and Heather Kopp. Okay, The Dream Giver. And this is the book. Yeah, I know, it's reversed, so let me go this way. Alright, so, let's just get started. <sighs> Give me a second here. Bruce Wilkinson, The Dream Giver. All right. Part one. The parable of the dream giver. Ordinary embraces his big dream. Not long ago and not far away, a nobody named Ordinary lived in the land of familiar. Every day was pretty much the same for Ordinary. In the mornings, he got up and went to his usual job. After work... He ate almost the same dinner he'd eaten the evening before. Then he sat in his recliner and watched the box that mesmerized most nobodies on most nights. Sometimes, best friend came over to join Ordinary in front of the box. Sometimes, Ordinary went to his parents and they watched together. For the most part, not much happened in Familiar that hadn't happened before. Ordinary thought he was content. He found the routines reliable. He blended in with the crowd, and mostly he wanted only what he had. Until the day Ordinary noticed a small nagging. Oh, a small nagging feeling that sometimes was something big was missing from his life. Or maybe the feeling was that he was missing from something big. He wasn't sure. The little feeling grew, and even though nobody in the familiar didn't generally expect the unexpected, Ordinary began to wish for it. Time passed. Then one morning, Ordinary woke up with these words echoing in his mind. What are you missing? You already have. Could it be? Ordinary looked and looked, and then he discovered that in a small corner of his heart lay a big dream. The big dream told him that he, a nobody, was made to be a somebody and destined to achieve great things. Jumping out of bed, Ordinary discovered something else. A long white feather resting on the sill of his window. Where did it come from? What did it mean? With a jolt of excitement, Ordinary decided he'd been visiting the Dream Giver. He'd been visited by the Dream Giver. Now Ordinary had, it, had heard rumors of various nobodies in familiar waking up to a big dream. But he never imagined that it could happen to him. He rushed to get dressed, his big dream beating brightly in his chest. He couldn't wait to get to his usual job to tell best friend the news. But on his way to work, Ordinary realized he had a problem. His big dream was too big for nobody like Ordinary. He would be embarrassed to tell anybody. Even best friend would probably laugh. Still, Ordinary was too excited to keep his dream to himself. As soon as he saw his best friend, he blurted out the news. The dream giver gave me a big dream. I was made to be a somebody and destined to achieve great things. Best friend looked surprised, but he didn't laugh. That's very big, he said. But if I were you, I wouldn't talk about this dream of yours too much. Nobody's around here might take you for a fool. Ordinary didn't want to look like a fool. So after that, he kept his big dream to himself. Day after day, Ordinary showed up at his usual job. But while he worked, he thought about his dream. He thought about how wonderful it would be to do what he loved to do instead of just dreaming about it. Ordinary longing for his big dream grew and grew until finally he realized that he'd never, been, he'd never be happy unless he could pursue it. Why didn't the dream giver make it possible? If the dream giver didn't, how could Ordinary ever leave familiar? He had payments and expenses. He had regular duties. A lot of nobodies counted on him for a lot of things. Ordinary felt completely stuck. Time passed, but nothing changed. He began to hate his usual job. This isn't what I was made to do, he said to himself. I just know it. After a while, he began to worry that maybe he hadn't received a big dream after all maybe it just made it all up and he grew sadder by the day one evening after work ordinary went to his parents to watch the box 
but their box was broken, so the house was very quiet. It was even more quiet because his mother was out shopping at Familiar Foods. In the quietness, Ordinary started to think about his dream again. He looked over at his father, sitting in his recliner, staring at a single page of, an, of nobody's news. Maybe he could help. Father, said Ordinary, I'm growing sadder by the day. I don't like my usual job anymore. In fact, I think I hate it. Father looked up. That's terrible, he said. What happened? Before he could stop himself, Ordinary started talking about the dream giver and about his big dream. I was made to be somebody and achieve great things, he said. And then he told his father the name of his dream. As he spoke, his voice trembled. He was sure that his father would laugh or call him a fool. But his father didn't. I'm not surprised to hear you say these things, he said. You're not, said Ordinary. No, his father said. You've had the dream ever since you were little. Don't you remember? You used to build that same dream with sticks and mud in front of this very house. Then Ordinary did remember. He'd always had this dream. It was what he had always wanted to do, and what he'd always thought he'd be, be go, uh, good at doing. His eyes filled with tears. Father, he said, I think I was born to do this. Ordinary and his father sat together quietly. His father seemed to be remembering something too. After a while, he asked, When you woke up to your big dream, son, did you happen to find a feather? Ordinary was shocked. How did you know, he asked. A long time ago, I woke up to a dream too, his father said, and it came with a long white feather. It was a wonderful dream. I kept the feather on my windowsill while I waited for a chance to pursue it. I waited and waited, but it never seemed possible. One day I noticed the feather had turned to dust. Of all the sad words Ordinary had never had ever heard, these were the saddest. Before he left that night, his father hugged him. Don't make the same mistake I did, son, he said. You don't have to stay a nobody. You can be a dreamer. When Ordinary got home, he went straight to the window and picked up the long white feather. He turned it over carefully in his hands. He thought about his father and the dream he'd left behind. Then he had a surprising idea. Could it be that maybe the dream giver gave everybody, every nobody a dream, but only some embraced their dreams and even fewer pursue them? The more he thought about it, the more he thought it had to be true. One thing Ordinary did know for sure. He didn't want to repeat his father's mistake. He wouldn't waste another day waiting for the dream to seem possible. He would find a way to pursue it. Time passed. Ordinary worked hard on his plan to begin his dream. He made hard choices. He made difficult changes. He even made big sacrifices. Finally, one morning, he was ready. Ordinary ran all the way to his usual job. His dream pounding hard in his chest. As soon as he saw the best friend, Ordinary blurted out the news. The big dream I told you about. I've decided to pursue it. Best friend looked concerned. You know all well I do that. Nobody who pursues their dreams leave familiar, he said. They set off like fools into the unknown in search of a place where... Yes, I know, Ordinary broke in. And I can't wait to get started. But Ordinary, that journey is anything but sensible or safe. Why leave familiar if it's so comfortable here? And besides, you've always lived here. I've thought all that too, said Ordinary. But my dream is too important, too wonderful to miss. Best friend shook his head. So you're going to become a dreamer, he said. I am a dreamer, answered Ordinary. Today, I'm going to tell my boss that I'm leaving my usual job. Tomorrow, I will begin my journey. Hey, best friend, added Ordinary eagerly. You can always have my recliner in my box. And with that, Ordinary walked away, humming a tune that he'd never heard before. The night before he left familiar, Ordinary decided to use the long white feather to help him remember the truth. He pulled out a notebook and wrote, My Dream Journal, on the cover. Then he dipped the quill in permanent ink and wrote on the first page, The Dream Giver 
gave me a big dream before I was born. I just finally woke up to it. My dream is what I do best and what I most love to do. How could I have missed it for so long? I had to sacrifice and make big changes to pursue my dream, but it will be worth it. It makes me sad to think that so many nobodies are missing something so big. Chapter 2 Ordinary Leaves His Comfort Zone The next morning, Ordinary woke up at the usual time, but instead of reporting to his usual job, he packed his suitcase with the usual stuff. Then he added his journal and a bottle of permanent ink. Just before he closed the latch, he carefully placed his long white feather inside. Soon, Ordinary was walking away from the comfortable center of Familiar, where almost every nobody lived. He was heading toward the border, where almost nobody ever went. Ordinary had never dared to walk this way before, but like every nobody, he knew that the farther you walk from the center of Familiar, the less familiar things became. He also knew that most nobodies who tried to leave the comfort zone of Familiar became so uncomfortable, they turned around and went home. So we're, so, we're so glad to be back. They sat in the recliner for days, waiting for nothing to happen, and sighing with relief. But Ordinary told himself he was different from what most nobodies. He would pursue his dream no matter what. Brimming with anticipation, Ordinary whistled his new tune while he walked, and he dreamed about the great things he would accomplish. Life had never seemed so promising. Ordinary hadn't gone far. However, when he no longer felt like whistling, he couldn't say why, but he was just wasn't in the mood anymore. Then, as he walked farther, he began to feel edgy. The scenery looked different. The leaves on the trees looked leafy in a different way. Now, when Ordinary thought about his dream, it looked different, too. For the first time, he saw how pursuing it could cause him a lot of discomfort. He would have to do unfamiliar things in unfamiliar places, and he wouldn't have his box to watch. Then he had an even more disturbing thought. To do what he loved, he would have to do what he most dreaded. Ordinary mood quickly went from edgy to anxious. His steps began to slow, and he began to have doubts about his big dream. What he had been thinking, he didn't have enough talent or skill to success at his dream. He was clearly unable to accomplish great things. What if he failed right in front of the other nobodies? Worse, even if he could do the dream, he was clearly unworthy and nobody could see he didn't deserve to live his dream. He was just ordinary after all. Maybe the dream giver had meant to give the dream to some other nobody more notable than him. By now, each step was harder to take than the last. His anxiety grew in fear. Then, up ahead, he saw a sign at red. Leaving the comfort zone of familiar, entering borderland. Now Ordinary felt sheer terror. Sweat poured off his forehead. He could hardly breathe. He could hardly think. Then he just came to the sign. Ordinary hit an invisible wall of fear. He stopped, unable to take one more step. He dropped his suitcase and sat on it. Should he turn around, he wondered, or should he try to find a way to go on? Time passed. Then he heard these words. Why are you stopping? Ordinary recognized the dream giver. I think I want to go back home, he said weakly. I'm not the right nobody to go after such a big dream. Yes, you are, said the dream giver. I made you to do this. But I don't think I can do this, he said. Yes, you can, and I will be with you. I will help you. Ordinary stayed where he was. He watched an unfamiliar bug crawl across the toe of his shoe. Strange birds flew by overhead. After a while, he stood and looked longingly toward the unknown. Somewhere out there was his big dream. But getting from here to there seemed way too hard. Then he looked longingly back towards familiar. He finally remembered all of its comforts. His usual job, his best friend, his recliner, his box. There was something wonderful about nothing happening. Ordinary picked up his suitcase and decided to take one step in that direction, just to see what it felt like. 
It felt better. Right away, his breathing came easier. So he took another step, just to see what that step would feel like. It felt even better. He went on with every step back toward the middle of familiar. Ordinary grew more comfortable, but he quickly noticed he was also growing sad again, and he knew why. With each step he took, he was leaving his big dream farther behind. Then he heard the dream giver again. Why are you going back? He asked. Ordinary stopped. Because I'm afraid. Leaving familiar feels too scary and too risky, he said. Yes, it does. But if I was supposed to do this big dream, he exclaimed, then I'm sure I wouldn't feel so afraid. Yes, you would, said the dream giver. Every nobody does. Ordinary hung his head. He thought for a moment. But you could take away that fear. Please take the fear away, he begged. If, if you don't, I can't go on. Yes, you can, the dream giver said. Take courage, Ordinary. And then he was gone. Ordinary saw his choice clearly now. He could either keep his comfort or his dream. But how do you take courage when you don't have any? Ordinary decided if his fear wasn't going to leave, he would have to go forward in spite of it. Still trembling, he picked up the suitcase and turned his back on familiar and walked to the sign. And even though his fear kept growing, Ordinary shut his eyes and took his big step forward, right through the invisible wall of fear. And there he made a surprising discovery. On the other side of that single step, the exact one Ordinary didn't think he could take, he found that he had broken through his comfort zone. Now the wall of fear was behind him. He was free, and his dream was ahead. He began to whistle again as he walked on, his big dream beating brightly in his chest. Later that day, Ordinary took out his journal and his long white feather, and he wrote down the truth about the comfort zone. It was hard to leave my comfort zone, but it would have been even harder to leave behind. My dream... And I'm glad I did. I still don't feel worthy or able to do my dream. But the dream giver has promised to help me. Now I know a secret. I can take courage even when I feel afraid. My d big dream was on the other side of that invisible wall of fear. I had to step through it. I didn't think I could, but I did. Chapter 3 Ordinary meets the bullies in the borderland. Not far past the sign... Ordinary's path sloped downward ahead. He saw the wide waters and the bridges to the unknown. Between him and the bridges lay a borderland, an open stretch of flat ground. Ordinary was surprised to see standing in the middle of the borderland a few nobodies from familiar. One of the nobodies, who looked more familiar than most, was hurrying towards him. It was his mother. She rushed up and threw her arms around Ordinary. Oh, Ordy, she cried. My baby, thank goodness we got here in time. But how did you get here so fast, he asked. When you're not really leaving familiar, she said, you don't have to break through all the dreadful discomfort. But why are you here? You mustn't go on, she said. I was so alarmed when I heard you were leaving familiar. I know you told us that you were, but I never thought you would. Honestly, what are you thinking? It's not safe. You could get hurt. You could even die. But it's my big dream, Mother, said Ordinary. It's a wonderful dream, and I want to pursue it. He tried to reassure his mother. He told her that as big dreams go, his was only a little life-threatening. But this seemed to alarm his mother more than ever. As they walked across the borderland, Ordinary spotted his uncle and best friend. Ordinary's uncle strode up first. So, you've decided to become a dreamer, he said accusingly. Do you realize that you're going to com going completely against every tradition in this family? Why should you become a somebody when the rest of us have always been happy being nobodies? But Ordinary could reply. Best friend stepped in. I was worried before, Ordinary said gravely. But the more I've thought about it, the more convinced I am that you can't succeed at this. I can't stand by and watch you go down in defeat. 
Ordinary was speechless and bewildered. He heard a rumor about the border bullies. But he had supposed that if it were true, bullies would be nobodies that he didn't know. He never imagined they'd be some of the nobodies who knew him best. Now his mother, uncle, and best friend all stood silent before him, blocking his view of the bridge to his big dream. How would he ever get past them? Should he ever try? He needed time to think. He asked his bullies to wait for him. Then he walked alone down to the water's edge, where he sat on a large rock. Looking out over the wide waters, ordinary thought and thought. He thought until he began to think that maybe his bullies were right. Maybe he was wrong to pursue his dream. Then Ordinary heard a voice call his name. When he turned to see who it was, he recognized a somebody. It was Champion, an old friend from Familiar who used to be a nobody. Champion exclaimed Ordinary, What are you doing here? Champion sat down on the rock beside him. When I heard you had become a dreamer, I just had to come. He said, I knew you'd need help. Thanks, said Ordinary with a heavy sigh. But did you see all my bullies? I saw them, said Champion. They're bullies. All right, but think of me as your border buster. I want to help you break through their opposition. Then Champion helped Ordinary understand what was happening. Your mother, uncle, and best friend are only doing what's natural, he said. When you left your comfort zone, you really shook up theirs. Each of them has something to lose if you go forward. That makes sense, Ordinary. But what do I do now? How do I get all my bullies on my side? Well, you might not be able to. Wisdom is the key. Try to understand what's motivating them. Look for the merit of their concerns. Some bullies you need to simply dismiss or avoid, but most border bullies have concerns that can help you clarify your plans. That's how a dreamer turns opposition into opportunity. When Champion stood to leave, he said, Hold fast to your dream, Ordinary. You're going to be a somebody someday. I just know it. Then he shook Ordinary's hand and jumped down from the rock. Remember, he said, When bullies try to block your way, what matters most is who you choose to please. Ordinary thought about Champion's parting words. He decided it was time to talk to his bullies again. As the sun began to set, he walked back and forth along the water's edge, talking with them. He told them more about his dream. He learned from their concerns. Then he told them he had decided to pursue his dream into the unknown. By unknown, Ordinary was ready to cross the border. As Mother handed him his suitcase, he saw tears in her eyes. I've changed my mind. I want you to pursue your dreams, she said, and your father will be so proud of you. I think he wishes he had taken the same journey years ago. Then she hugged him goodbye. Ordinary shook hands with best friend and his uncle, who still did not look pleased. While the three watched, he walked toward the bridge over the wide waters. In the gathering dusk, Ordinary had failed to notice that anybody, that another nobody stood on the bridge. But this nobody was not just any nobody. He was the landlord of Familiar. He was the one who decided what was right for the nobodies. He owned every inch of land. He even owned the bridge. I am denying you access to my bridge, he said. But why, asked Ordinary. Because I need every nobody to stay in familiar at their usual job, said the landlord. I won't lose any more nobodies till this silly notion of dreams. I will not let you go. Ordinary tried hard not to panic. Wisdom told him that an antagonist like the landlord was the worst kind of bully. He had a lot to lose and he didn't care about ordinary. What should he do now? What could he do? Then ordinary remembered Champion's parting words. And that's when he decided to swim. He knew he might not make it. The wide waters were very wide and he wasn't a very strong swimmer. But he had to try. While his bullies looked on, Ordinary walked down to the wide waters. He was about to step in when something caught his eye. A small boat was moored nearby. When he got closer, Ordinary saw a note on the seat of the boat. He picked it up and read, Ordinary, if you found this boat, I know you've chosen to please the dream giver. Enjoy a dry crossing. 
Your dream is waiting for you in the land of promise. I promise. Champion. Ordinary untied the boat, stowed his suitcase in the front of the boat, and shoved off. As he rowed out into the wide waters, Ordinary watched his border bullies go smaller and smaller. When he was sure that he had finally really left familiar, he waved his last goodbyes to the nobodies on the shore. But by then, it was too dark to tell if they waved back. That very night, before he went to sleep in the tall, dry grass on the other side of the waters, Ordinary used his feather again to write in his journal. I met bullies at the borderland. They were nobodies I knew. When I left familiar, it was upset comfort zone of those too close to me. They left like they were losing something important. Even though my bullies tried to stop me, some of their concerns will help me. I couldn't sway all my bullies in the end. I had decided who I would please. I chose to please the dream giver. Chapter 4 Ordinary enters the wasteland. Ordinary slept deeply and woke, humming his unfamiliar tune. The fears of leaving his comfort zone were gone now. His border bullies were behind him. His step was light as he traveled into the unknown. Around each new bend, he expected to reach the land of promise, where he would find his big dream. But he didn't find it. Instead, he soon found himself at the edge of the wide chasm. A haze obscured the view below. When he reached the bottom, he saw that lay ahead, and what he saw made his heart sink. He saw miles and miles of nothing but sand, rocks, and a few scraggly trees. He was standing on the edge of empty, wasteland. How could any wonderful dream live here, he thought. He wasn't sure, but the path continued on, curving away into the dreary distance. So he decided to go on. Ordinary walked and walked. Every time... He got hungry, he opened his suitcase and ate. And every time he got thirsty, he opened it and drank. And every time he thought about his dream, he decided to keep going. Time passed. Ordinary skin burned. His feet blistered. His bones ached. One day blurred into another. And then one day he got hungry and he opened his case and didn't find anything to eat. That was the day Ordinary began to worry. He called out to the dream giver for food, but he got no answer. Two days later, he ran out of water. He called out to the dream giver again, and again, he heard nothing. Fortunately, that was also the ordinary managed to find a trickle of water coming from a rock. At least now, he was only starving. But if he was smart enough to find water, maybe he could find food too. Sure enough, it wasn't too long before he spotted a strange bush with some strange desert fruit hanging from its branches. Ordinary tried one. It didn't taste sweet. But it didn't taste sour either, so he ate his fill. Still, the dream giver was nowhere in sight. More time passed. The longest hours and days Ordinary could ever remember passed. Desperately, he began to look for a way out. One day, he followed what looked like a shortcut over a ridge. But it led to a canyon that ended in quicksand. He tried traveling at night when it was cooler, but he kept losing a trail. Every delay made him more determined to find a quicker route but every attempt only led to another dead end. Again and again, <coughs> Ordinary lost his way. Again and again, he cried out for the dream giver to show him the way, but no answer came. When he had, why had he even trusted the dream giver to guide him in the first place? The, gate, the day came when Ordinary finally gave up. He sat on his suitcase and refused to move until the dream giver showed up with a plan. But the dream giver didn't show up that day, or the next. Ordinary had never felt so lost and alone. He became angry. He got angrier and angrier. And then he heard, that, and then a hard, hot wind began to blow. The wind blew all that day and the next. Sand blew into Ordinary's eyes. It blew into his teeth and ears. When the wind finally stopped, Ordinary stood to his feet. But as far as he could see, there was only sand. The path to his dream had disappeared completely. Obviously, his entire trip through the wasteland had been wasted. Hot tears coursed down his dirty cheeks. You're not a dream giver, he shouted at the sky. You're a dream taker. I trusted you. You promised to be with me and help me, and you didn't. 
Then Ordinary stumbled in despair across the sandy waste, dragging his empty suitcase behind him. His dream was dead, and now he wanted to die, too. When he came to a scraggly tree, he lay down in its scraggly patch of shade and closed his eyes. That night, he slept the sleep of a dreamless dream. The next morning, Ordinary heard something startled. He peered up to see a shimmering somebody sitting in the branch of the tree. Who are you? He asked as she climbed down to the ground. My name is Faith, she said. The dream giver sent me to help you. But it's too late, cried Ordinary. My dream is dead. When I needed the dream giver most, he was nowhere in sight. What do you need that you haven't received? asked Faith. Well, if it weren't for the few springs of water I found, answer, or answer Ordinary, I'd be dead of thirst by now. Yes, and? she asked. If it weren't for the fruit I found, I'd be walking skeleton, he replied. Wait, I am a walking skeleton. I could die of starvation any minute. Oh my, Faith murmured. And? Well, huffed ordinary, a little guidance would have been nice. Ever since I came here, it's been one delay after another. I've been wandering in circles since I don't know when. What a waste. I see, said Faith, nodding. So what will you do now? Just tell me how to get back to familiar, he said. I'm sorry, she said, but I can't help you with that. <laughs> that figure, said Ordinary. The dream giver sends me a helper who can't even help. You might be right, said Faith. But that's for you to decide. Then Faith walked away in a direction Ordinary felt sure was wrong. It wasn't long before Ordinary began to have a second thought. What if he was wrong? He wished he hadn't been so rude to the somebody named Faith, and he began to miss her. He realized that while they were talking, he had felt hope for the first time in a very long time. Ordinary jumped to his feet and scanned the horizon. Faith! He cried, but she was nowhere in sight. Faith! He cried again, but there was no reply. Then Ordinary had an idea. He climbed a scaggly tree to the top. From there he could see Faith in the distance. As quickly as he could, he climbed down, set off in the same direction. Later that same day, Ordinary was eating some fruit beside a trickle of water when he saw his journey through the wasteland in a whole new way. Food enough for a day. Water when he needed to drink. A path to follow that led to faith. How could he have been so blind? Even when the dream giver had been nowhere in sight, he had always been near. That was the day too, that Ordinary looked at his empty suitcase and decided it was time to leave it behind. He made a makeshift knapsack, took his dream journal and feather and ink and walked on. After that, whenever Ordinary came to a scraggly tree, he climbed it to look for Faith, and when he had her in sight, he marked his direction and started walking again. One day, Ordinary met some dreamers returning to Familiar. They told him a sad story. They had crossed the wasteland and nearly reached the Land of Promise, but then they encountered giants so large and overwhelming that the dreamers felt as small as grasshoppers, and the dream giver had been nowhere in sight. <clears throat> the nobody sounded convincing, and he recognized the weariness. But as they continued talking, he saw something more. They had stopped trusting the dream giver. And now they were traveling the opposite direction from Faith. When nobody strongly warned him, when the nobody strongly warned him that lay ahead was too hard, he saw something else. He had changed. His trip through the wasteland had not been a waste. Now he was prepared for what lay ahead, no matter how hard. Travel safely, he told the returning nobodies, but I'll be going on. As Ordinary pressed on to the desert, his dream beat brightly in his chest again, and the more the sun blazed, the more Ordinary believed that he could find the land of promise, no matter how long it took, if only he took the way of faith. One morning on the far side of the desert, Ordinary wrote down the truth about the wasteland. After crossing the waters, I thought my dream was just around the corner. Instead, I found a wasteland. I was disappointed by the delay and my doubts about the dream giver only made things worse. 
Now I see the, lace, the wasteland was not a waste. It has taught me to trust the dream giver even when he's nowhere in sight. I think I am stronger now. I am following faith. And every day I feel more prepared for whatever lies ahead. Chapter 5. Ordinary Fine Sanctuary One night Ordinary dreamed that the dream giver was standing near him. Well done, Ordinary, the dream giver said. Come to my sanctuary. When Ordinary awoke, he was beside a gurgling stream. How he arrived there or when, he wasn't sure. But the wasteland was behind him. He wondered at his dream and hoped it was true. Was the dream giver pleased with him? Was sanctuary a real place? And could it be nearby? He picked up his knapsack and decided to follow the stream into the lush mountain forest he saw ahead. Something seemed to be drawing him onward and upward. He couldn't say what, but it felt like an invitation. Before long, giant trees towered over an ordinary. Walking across the floor of the forest, he felt hushed and small and swallowed up by the greatness. Then he began to climb. Higher and higher he climbed, following the stream until suddenly he entered a level clearing field, a level clearing filled with bright light. His heart told him that this sanctuary and he was in the presence of the dream giver. Come to the water, he heard the dream giver say. Ahead of him in the clearing, he saw a small waterfall that fed a pool of still water. He walked onto the edge, then slipped into the purest water he had ever seen. He floated and splashed, sending diamonds of light spraying through the air. Time passed, but it didn't seem to pass at all. When Ordinary emerged from the pool, the last trace of the lace land had been washed away. Ordinary stayed in the clearing filled with light for many days. The dream giver had never felt so close, as present now as he had felt absent in the wasteland. Then Ordinary heard the dream giver's voice again, Come into the light. That's when Ordinary noticed that the light, which had been shining all around him, was now shining through him. Trembling he looked, and he saw into his heart, he saw things he had said and done that he did not want to see. He saw rebellion and selfishness selfishness and betrayal. And everywhere he looked, he saw darkness. Tears began streaming down his cheeks. Take away my darkness, he pleaded. Give me your light. And the dream giver did. He took away ordinary darkness and gave him his light. Then the dream giver said, come closer to me. And ordinary did. Again and again, Ordinary came deeper into the light, and the further he came, the more he felt at one with the Dream Giver. Then the Dream Giver spoke again. Come high, he said. Ordinary started up the mountain again. His step light, he couldn't wait to discover what the Dream Giver had in store for him. Before long, Ordinary emerged at a summit. He found himself standing on a broad table of rock, Gazing out at a glorious sight, a river below, then a wide valley, and above it, all along the far horizon, a gleaming river of shining hills. The land of promise, ordinary gasped. It has to be. Yes, he heard the dream giver say. Ordinary let out a shout of victory. I made it! My big dream is right over there, he yelled. Yes, ordinary was overcome with happiness. His big dream was finally within reach. Oh, how he wished that his best friend, his parents, and everybody and nobody familiar could be here to see what he was seeing at this moment. Ordinary, said the dream giver. Yes, said Ordinary. Give me your dream. What do you mean, Ordinary asked. It's my dream. You're the one who gave it to me. Yes, and now I'm asking you to give it back. Ordinary was shocked, but he didn't even have to think. I, I can't, he told the dream giver, and I won't. Ordinary paced back and forth along the rim of the summit, trying to understand what had just happened. Why would the dream giver want to take away his big dream? How could he even ask, especially now when Ordinary had come so far? 
It wasn't fair. It wasn't even right. Then Nora had an idea. Maybe there was a way out. Do I have to give it back? He asked. No, the dream giver said. Some choose not to. So he had a choice. He could keep his dream. But instead of a relief of that thought, Ordinary felt confused and sad. What was he going to do? He slumped down on the rock. He thought for a long while. Finally he saw what was at stake. He could please the dream giver and surrender his dream. Or he could go against the dream giver's wishes and keep his dream. But risk losing the dream giver's pleasure. The choice broke his heart. Time passed. Ordinary thought. And he thought some more. The sun set and rose again. In the morning light, his eyes fell on a smooth, flat stone nearby. Picking it up, he noticed that the stone fit perfectly in his palm. Then he saw a word etched into the surface. Remember. What could it mean, he wondered. Was the stone a message from the dream giver or from another dreamer? What should he remember? Holding the stone, Ordinary found himself thinking back. He remembered Champion and Faith. They must have faced this choice. What would they say to him now? He remembered the returning dreamers. He could still hear their sad and bitter voices. They could have surrendered their dreams here. They didn't even trust the dream giver. Over and over, he turned the stone in his palm. Finally, his thoughts turned to the dream giver. The dream giver has always kept his promise. He had always been good to Ordinary, even when he was nowhere in sight and nothing seemed to make sense. Then Ordinary knew what he had to do. No, what he wanted to do. He carried his knapsack to the edge of the rock and sat down. He took out his journal and his long white feather. He wrote his last entry about his big dream. I am surrendering my dream to you, dream giver. I've decided it's you that I cannot go without. Then Ordinary left his journal open on the rock. He wouldn't be needing it any longer. He put the feather and stone in his bag and began his slow descent to the river below. Later that day, Ordinary reached the river. No one waited for him there. He had no dream or plan now, yet he felt a deep peace. He waded into the river and swam across, pulling his knapsack behind him. At the far bank, he climbed out. And the first thing he saw was his journal lying open on the grass. His heart racing, he picked up and it read, Ordinary, I am giving you back your dream. Now you can use it to serve me. Now you can achieve truly great things. And I am with you always. Ordinary knelt by the riverbank and wept with joy. The dream giver was more kind, more good, more wonderful and trustworthy than he had ever imagined. Now when Ordinary looked at his, at his surrendered dream, he saw that it had grown. Now his dream was no longer only about Ordinary. Now it was a part of the dream giver's big dream for the whole world. When Ordinary stood to leave, he noticed on the rise above the river a memorial built of stones. Every stone was smooth and small and had the word remember etched on its surface. Standing by the monument to the dream giver's goodness, Ordinary felt awed and surrendered by many witnesses. Carefully placed his own stone on top of the memorial, and he walked on. That evening, by the light of the moon, Ordinary pulled his journal out of his knapsack and wrote about his time in Sanctuary. I will never be the same after Sanctuary. I swam in still waters, and there washed away the last traces of the wasteland. The dream giver's light revealed the darkness inside of me. I was unbearable. How could he want me to come any closer? But he took away my darkness. When the dream giver asked me to give my dream to him, I didn't think I could. But I wanted the dream giver more than my dream, so I did. The dream giver gave my dream back to me, and now it's part of his big dream. And that means my dream is a lot bigger than before. May I always use it to serve him. Chapter 6. Ordinary Reaches the Valley of the Giants 
In the morning, Ordinary entered a broad valley that seemed to lead up to the land of promise, but soon he came upon a sign that read, Beware, Dreamer, Valley of the Giants. Ordinary stared at the sign. So the returning dreamers were right. Giants were real. What should he do? He had no weapon. He had no plan, but his big dream was bigger than ever. And he trusted the dream giver. So he decided to press on. Ordinary hadn't gone far before he heard giant footsteps. He hurried to hide behind the bush. He was not yet ready to face a giant. But when Ordinary peered around a leaf, he didn't see a giant obstacle, but a mighty being. Hail, brave warrior, the being called out. Who, me? Ordinary asked in a small voice. Yes, you behind the bush. I'm no warrior, mumbled Ordinary, stepping out from behind the bush. He never felt so foolish. I'm a nobody from the land of familiar, he said. Every nobody who comes this far is a warrior, said the being. I'm the commander. The dream giver sent me to help you defeat the giant, defeat your giants. He did? I do need help, said Ordinary eagerly. Compared to a giant, I'm small and weak. Don't be afraid of any giant, Ordinary, said the commander. They're real. They're enormous. They block the path to your dream. But if you believe in the dream giver and you're willing to take a big risk, you will get past them. <laughs> but I have no weapons or armor, exclaimed Ordinary. Then the commander helped Ordinary see how the dream giver had been preparing him for battle since the day he left familiar. All the truths you've learned on your journey so far will serve as a weapon and armor, he said. But how will I know what to do? asked Ordinary. The dream giver will tell you, and he will give you the, his power if you ask for it. Ordinary felt reassured, but he still didn't feel like a warrior. Beware of unbelief, Ordinary, said the commander. Unbelief is much more dangerous to your dream than any giant. And then the commander was gone. Ordinary hadn't gone far up the valley when he met his first giant. It was enormous, all right, and it completely blocked the path to his dream. When it noticed Ordinary, the giant yawned in his direction. Where do you think you're going, little nobody? Ordinary recognized the giant towering over him. It was moneyless. I need to get past, said Ordinary. Sure you do. Everybody does, the giant said. Ordinary tried to think of a plan, but none came to mind. So I need you to get out of my way, he said. I'm not moving, said the giant. I guess you'll have to move me yourself. For a moment, Ordinary hesitated. Then he cried out, Dream giver, help me. Please give me your power. And the dream giver did. Then he told Ordinary what to do and what to say. Ordinary looked up the giant called Moneyless and shouted, I challenge you in the name of the dream giver. Then he attacked the giant with all his weapons and armor. At first, the giant didn't move. But Ordinary kept reaching for the truce he had learned. He took courage. He believed that the dream giver would provide. He relied on wisdom. He fought on. He endured. And with every advance, he felt the dream giver's pleasure. Finally, the day came when Moneyless did retreat. Ordinary's cry of victory rang through the valley. Great and good is the dream giver, he cried. After that victory, Ordinary never doubted again that he was a warrior. As Ordinary traveled up the valley, he met more giants. Some, like Moneyless, were obstacles that he had to get around. Some, like Corruption, opposed his dream and fought him fiercely. Some, like Rejection, attacked him personally and left him deeply wounded. But Ordinary met other dreamers, too. During seasons of rest, they gathered to tell stories about the dream giver and encourage each other. From other dreamers, Ordinary learned to see a bigger picture. Every giant was another opportunity for the dream giver to receive honor. Higher and higher, Ordinary moved up the valley, battling giants on his way to his dream. One day, Ordinary came across a wounded warrior lying on a quiet hill. Ordinary dropped down by her side. How can I help you, he asked. My wounds are too many and great, she said. This will be my dying place. Ordinary's heart broke. But why would the dream giver let you be defeated, Ordinary? You come so far, you have to finish your big dream. 
She had no reply. Night fell. The wounded warrior grew weaker. Finally, in the darkness, she said, Tell me the name of your dream. After Ordinary did, the warrior was quiet for a time. Then she spoke. This is the name of my dream also, she said. I fought giants ahead of you. You will fight more after me. But we have the same big dream. In the first light of dawn, she spoke for the last time. Death is not my defeat, she whispered. It's my victory. That morning, Ordinary buried his warrior friend on the hilltop. Then he sat for a long time looking across the hills and valleys. He thought about the warrior's life and about her death. He thought about her dying words. And he became certain that he would not have gotten this far on the path of his dream if his friend had not gone before him. Finally, Ordinary took his long white feather and wrote the truth on her headstone. Here lies a mighty warrior. She finished her dream. Soon after leaving the hill, Ordinary began to sense that he was almost through the Valley of Giants. He was getting closer to the place where he could do what he wanted to do most, and he walked faster in anticipation. Then one day, just as he caught a glimpse of the high country ahead, he stumbled upon a small camp of ragged anybodies. Ordinary had never met any anybodies, but he hadn't heard of them. But he'd heard of them. They were a lot like nobodies. The anybodies told him they were from the city of anybodies that just lay ahead. A giant of darkness oppressed the city from his stronghold at the gates. No anybody could leave or enter. It had been that way for so long that anybody could remember how long it had been that way. When Ordinary asked about the dream giver, the anybodies just shook their heads. Few believed in him. Other warriors had mentioned his name. They said, but they passed by without challenging their giant. Should he pass by too? He couldn't wait to find his big dream. The ordinary heard the dream giver's voice. He said, prepare for battle. Word spread quickly through the camp. The warrior named Ordinary was about to challenge the giants of darkness in the name of the dream giver. Anybody's crowded around the giant stronghold to watch. Ordinary walked up to the giant and cried, Giant of darkness, in the name of the dream giver, I come to defeat you. I proclaim deliverance for everybody and anybody in the camp and every anybody in the city. When the giant burst out of his stronghold, the anybody's gasped. None of these anybody's will ever be free, the giant roared. Their lives are worthless. Their hopes are lies. Then he attacked with the heaviest chains of the darkest that Ordinary had ever seen. Ordinary fought courageously. He fought with the dream giver's power and he used every weapon and piece of armor he had. All day, the sound of warfare crashed through the valley. But by mid-afternoon, any, anybody could see that Ordinary was growing weak while the giant was strong as ever. Ordinary retreated to the edge of the field and cried out to the dream giver, Are you with me? Yes, the dream giver said. This giant is too strong for me, gasped Ordinary. Yes, it is. A victory will take a miracle, said Ordinary. Yes, it will. So what should I do? Prepare for a miracle, said the dream giver. Lay down your weapons. Take only your feather, and you will bring me great honor. Leave his weapons? Unbelief swept through Ordinary's heart. What the dream giver asked was impossible. Then Ordinary remembered. He remembered surrendering his dream and getting it back even bigger and better than before. He remembered the dream giver's goodness in the wasteland, even when he was nowhere in sight. He remembered the dying warrior's victory, and he remembered his big dream. And that's when Ordinary turned away from unbelief and decided to take a big risk for the dream giver. He put down his weapons. Every anybody groaned in disappointment. Then Ordinary picked up his knapsack and pulled out his feather and walked toward the giant. The anybody gasped in disbelief. But the giant only laughed. Are you going to knock me over with a feather reward? Ordinary wasn't sure what to do or say until the giant of darkness towered over him. Then the dream giver told him just what to do. He raised his long white feather high above his head. And as he did, it grew heavy in his hands, as heavy as a sword. 
If the dream giver give it, if the dream giver is for me, ordinary shouted, what giant can't stand against me? Then he swung the feather in a mighty arc right across the giant's evil heart. And when he swung, an amazing thing happened. Chains scattered into pieces, darkness fled, and the giant collapsed in a heap, defeat at ordinary's feet. The anybody's knew a miracle when they saw one. Soon a noisy Happy procession led ordinary past the defeated giant, around his dark stronghold, and up to the giant of their city. With every step, the joyful anybody sang praises, but the praises were not for ordinary. The dream giver is good, they sang. The dream giver is strong. Victorious belongs to the dream giver. For the first time that anybody could remember, they were free. Sitting by the warrior's grave, ordinary took his feather and wrote the truth about the valley of giants. I met a friend who shared shared my dream and helped make it happen. Before I met my first giant and met the commander, he told me that I am a warrior. He showed me that my weapons are every truth I've learned on my journey. Unbelief is dangerous. So far I have chosen to believe, but it feels risky every time. Even though I have prepared to face my giants, I still need the dream giver's power. Every time I defeat a giant, the dream giver receives honor. Giants beware. Chapter 7. Ordinary Thrives in the Land of Promise When Ordinary passed through the Anabody's city gates, he saw hope and joy on every face. Thank you, warrior, the Anabody shouted. Thank you for your helping us. But the celebration hadn't moved far into the city when Ordinary began to see signs of want and need. He was shocked to see that some Anabodies lived in the dirt. Some lived in the homes built out of sticks and mud. Still, all day and all night, the celebration filled the streets of the city. The next day, grateful anybody's begged Ordinary to stay with them for a while. Yes, he said, but only for a short time. He still had a big dream to pursue. He could picture the city where he would accomplish his dreams more clearly now than ever. It was a beautiful city with which white marble walls and shone with promise in his heart. And it felt very, very near. In the days that followed, Ordinary walked through the every street and lane and path of this dismal city of anybody's. He talked to anybody and he talked to young anybody's and old anybody's, and what he saw and heard filled him with sadness. Yes, the giants of darkness was gone, but the years of tyranny had left the city damaged and broken. The needs of the anybody's were great and their hopes were few. Ordinary's heart Ordinary's heart began to ache in a way it had never ached before. One day, Ordinary took a stroll near the city gates. As he walked, he talked with the friendly antibodies' children who follow him. Then he heard the dream giver say, What do you see? Ordinary stopped. He looked down into the children's faces. I see beautiful antibodies in great need, he said. Yes, said the agreement. What else do you see? Then Ordinary looked up. He could hardly believe his eyes. Carved in the side of the gate was the name of his dream. Your big dream lies here, the dream giver said. Could it be true? Instantly he knew it was true. He had arrived. Then Ordinary understood why he hadn't recognized his big dream when it was right in front of him. The lovely city he'd imagined all along was not his dream, but a picture of what his dream would accomplish. The big needs of these antibodies marched perfectly the big dream in his heart, and it was time to do his dream. Ordinary was so excited that he let go with a whoop of joy, much to his delight of the anybody children. The next morning, Ordinary woke up early, ready to begin. Of course, he had no idea where to begin. There were so many needs that he was overwhelmed. He was just one dreamer, but he decided to begin at the beginning. He saw the need nearest him and tried to meet it. He spent what he had. He did what he could. He used what he knew. Every day he asked the dream giver to help guide him. And these things and the things began to change for anybody's. Time passed and Ordinary worked hard. Doing his dream could be difficult, but Ordinary had never felt more fulfilled. He was building something new from something broken. He was meeting new bit meeting big needs while doing what he loved to do most. One day two more dreams arrived in the city. For many days, they walked the streets and walked to anybody's, young and old. 
Then they told the Ordinary that the city of anybody's was the city of their dreams too. Immediately, Ordinary saw that it was true. The two dreamers had resources that Ordinary lacked. They had skills he had never learned. He could meet important big needs than Ordinary couldn't. That was a very good day for Ordinary and for the antibodies too. More time passed. Ordinary de Ordinary's devotion to the dream giver grew. He always did what the dream giver told him to do. He was careful to remember what the dream giver had done. And he worked hard to protect his dream from a compromise. Then one day Ordinary made a surprise discovery. And anybody had told Ordinary that he didn't enjoy his work very much. And Ordinary had noticed that he wasn't very good at it either. Ordinary asked him, what do you love to do most? When he answered, Ordinary saw the problem. There wasn't much opportunity here for this anybody to do what he loved. Ordinary thought for a moment. Do anybody's have big dreams, he asked. I wish, the anybody said wistfully. I wish I had a big dream. But it seems like you do, exclaimed Ordinary. He thought some more. Then he asked, have you always lived here? Yes, he said. So this is familiar to you, right? Yes, he said. It's very familiar. I'm comfortable here. I find the routines reliable, but sometimes it feels like something big is missing or that I... Say no more, cried Ordinary. That evening, Ordinary taught the village of anybody's his unfamiliar tune. Only now that he was a somebody living his dream, he knew the words too. It was a song about the special place that every anybody has in the dream giver's heart. It was a song about how every anybody is made to be somebody special and accomplish great things. After that, a lot of anybody began wa waking up to their big dreams. Some found that the city of their dream was a city of anybody's. Others set off on journeys of their own. And not long after that, the city began to look a lot like the picture of the big dream that Ordinary had carried in his heart for so long. More and more, the city's walls gleamed in the sun like the marble in the streets shone with promise. Then one day, Ordinary thought he heard the dream giver say, Come farther. Ordinary, fought, Ordinary found himself walking, knapsack over his shoulder, along the far wall of the back of the city. He noticed a little gate he'd never noticed before. He heard the dream giver again, Come farther. He opened the gate and stepped outside. But as he did, he felt strangely uncomfortable. He looked toward the distant unknown. Well done, Ordinary, the dream giver said. You are a good and faithful dreamer. Now let, us show, now let me show you more. More, asked Ordinary. More, said the dream giver. There's so much more of my big dream waiting for you. Now Ordinary looked at the horizon again, and he saw many valleys and wide waters, and he saw the gleam of more and more lands of promise waiting for Dreamer to claim for the dream giver. Soon you will leave what is familiar once again, the dreamer said, and I will be with you. Suddenly, Ordinary understood. His big dream in the city of anybody was, was nearly done. He was ready now for the dream to grow into a new and bigger dream. Soon it would be time to pursue it. Ordinary looked again toward what lay in the future. The horizon was full of promise. Thank you, dream giver, Ordinary whispered. Thank you for the gift of the big dream. And he began to hum the unfamiliar tune. Dear Father, I'm writing to, writing to you after a very long journey. But I made it. I'm living the land of promise and watching my dream, my big dream happen all around me. And to think it all started with sticks and, and mud when I was a boy. Father, I discovered that every nobody has a dream and it's never too late to pursue it. I know you thought your dream died, but a, but a big dream never dies. Your dream is here somewhere, waiting for you, and if you don't pursue it, something very important won't happen. Of course, Mother has a big dream too. I can't wait to see both of you. Father, as you see, I'm sending you my feather. It will help you in your journey. It will lead you straight toward a miracle that has your name on it. I miss you. Love you, your son, Ordinary. Part 2, The Journey to, the, to Your Big Dream Meet Your Dream Coach I hope you enjoyed the story of Ordinary and his journey to achieve his big dream. Most of us can relate to the character of Ordinary because at times we feel very 
ordinary ourselves in a world vast and impersonal as ours. It's easy to feel like a nobody, isn't it? But the truth but the truth ordinary discovered from the dream giver is that every nobody was made to be a somebody, and the key to discovering all you are meant to do and be is to wake up to the big dream God has given you and set out on a journey to achieve it. In the coming chapters, that's what I want to help you do. Think of me as your travel guide or dream coach. My advice comes from years of experience as a dreamer and incorporates the lessons others have taught me along the way. More important insights and principles I have shared are based on the timeless truths of the Bible. Not surprisingly, the Bible story that most clearly shows these principles at work is the epic story of Israel's journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. We'll use that story, especially as it was lived out by Moses and Joshua, to the un uncover the secrets of a successful dreamers. The story of Exodus reveals a pattern that is repeated throughout the Bible whenever God's people reach for their dream and attempt great things for him. In almost every instance they become aware of personal dream or calling, then decide to pursue it. Face fear as they leave a place of comfort, encounter opposition from those around them, endure a season of difficulty to test their faith, learn the importance of surrender and concentration to God, fight the giants that stand between them and the fulfillment of their dreams, Reach their full potential as they achieve their dreams and bring honor to God. The, the good news for, for every dreamer is that each stage or obstacle along our journey is intended not to block our dream, but to help us break through to the fulfillment of God's promises. Like ordinary, I can count as many scars as successes on the journey to my dream. The way of the dreamer is difficult, but anything less is hardly living at all. In fact, I've discovered that it's the only way you find and I can find true fulfillment and become all that God created us to be. Isn't it time to begin? You're waiting long enough. Your dream is beating in your chest. Do you feel it? Tell your friends the news. Pack your bags. It's time to follow your dream and the dream giver on the journey of your dream. Chapter 8. You were born for this. I'll stop here for tonight. So... Tell me what you think. That's what we stopped the chapter 8. As you can see the book, I will push it here. So, I've read this book a couple times to everybody. Because it's a book that I appreciate. It's a, it's a book that touches us. We all live amongst people. They either tell us what to do because they're scared. They, they, they tell us where to go because they, they, they've fallen many times. You know, we, we get around people that we that bo they're bullies to us in a sense that either they haven't done it, they've done it and failed, or they don't want us to fail. But once we get through there, you know, the desert, the land of ordinary, how many times have we been in a job and we think we're going nowhere? How many times in the Marine Corps, I can't tell you how many times I was in the Marines and, and I was so worried about what was going on back home, I wasn't familiar. It just felt like we were going nowhere, but my God, we had to keep pushing forward. And all of a sudden I realized... We're actually farther than everybody else. And then you come back home and you meet the giants, the people that tell you what you can do, what you can't do, the ones that put you in your place, the ones that are going to be a bully towards you. And you, know, and you can't fight them with anger, hate, or fear. You've got to figure out a strategy to get around them and to make them retreat. And like I said, this, this works for everybody. you got to have your faith. you got to believe. That's why I tell people it's not about what religion you pray to. It's about who you're praying to. It's not about your faith, but what you have faith in. You know, God's everybody and everything. It's up to us to make sure we know about that. I'm Jeffrey Jansen. I hope you all go back and read this. I'll read the rest tomorrow, okay? But we want to talk about this a little bit tomorrow. And I hope you all go back and re listen to it and read the book if you got it. If you want me to buy you a book, I'll buy you a book. I'll send you a book. I don't care. I think this book's important for everybody. So for tonight, I hope you all have a great night. And I love talking with you all. And thank you for listening tonight. And we'll read Chapter 8 tomorrow. So as I say hi to everybody, I didn't realize I had that many people watching me tonight. I... Hope and pray each and every one of you have a great night, and I will talk with everybody tomorrow. Bye now.